Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Our previous tutorial was about writing point cut expressions. We looked at a few ways in which we can configure point cut expressions and how to combine different point cut expressions. In this tutorial, before we start, let me highlight one problem with this advice over here. Now I have a logging advice that prints advice has been run and a get method has been called. Now let me remove this other advice. I won't need that for this tutorial. Okay, so now I have a logging advice that runs for the getters of the circle. Now, let's say I change my mind and then now I want this advice to run for all the circle methods. Now I'll remove this and I'll say logging advice has to run for all circle methods. Now, what does all circle methods mean? That means that it's uh, a point cut that applies over here. It is within all methods of the class circle. Now the problem is this. Now the circle has one getter and one setter. So no matter whether the getter runs or the setter runs, this advice will get executed. Now look at what I'm printing over here. I'm printing that a get method is called. So this message, get method called message will get printed even if a setter is run. I wouldn't want that. So how would I modify this logging advice to print a message depending on which method actually triggered the advice. Now, if a getter is run, I want the get message to be printed. And now if a setter is run, I want the message to say, hey, a setter has been run. Now, how would I do that? I do that by actually using what is called as a join point. Now, this advice method that I've written over here is a no args advice. It does not take any arguments. Now, I can write an argument over here, I can specify an argument called as a join point. A join point is something I need to import from our gas picture lang. Now a join point has information about the actual method call that triggered this advice. Now if I write an advice with a join point as an argument, Spring is automatically going to pass this information to me. Spring is going to put that information inside a join point object and it's going to pass it to me. I can use a join point object over here to get information about what was the method that actually triggered the call. And then of course, this is going to be different for different uh, methods. Now when the getter is called, this join point will have information about the getter. If a setter is called, then the join point will have information about the setter. And if some other method is called, for that method, the join point will contain the necessary information. So. What is join point actually? Join point is a AOP terminology and uh, just like other AOP terminologies, it's not very intuitive, but once you get a hang of it, it'll, it'll be very clear. Now, join point means all the places in your code where you can apply advice. Now, what do I mean by that? Isn't advice applied to methods? Yes, advice is applied to methods. And as far as Spring AOP is concerned, if you're doing AOP in Spring, you can apply advice only to methods and only methods are join points and join points are only methods. So it's uh, it's synonymous. But then if you're using uh, say Aspic J, you can apply advice to a few other things. Say in my circle class, I want an advice to run when the name uh, member variable changes. And I'm not talking about just the setter. Even if you change the name member variable without using the setter, you would want a join, you, you would want an advice to run. And uh, that's not possible using Spring AOP, but if you're using Aspect J, you can actually configure point cuts so that an advice runs for member variable updates, for example. So for such scenarios, it makes sense to have a terminology called join point and then what it describes. But then as far as Spring AOP is concerned, join points mean all possible places in which you can apply advice and uh, the possible places in which you can apply advice in Spring is just method name. So when you think of join points, you think of methods. So, so what does this mean here? So join point here, which is an argument that Spring passes whenever an advice is run, contains information about the method. It's as simple as that. So I can use this join point object to get information about the method that triggered this. Now let me use that here. Instead of printing out a static message, what I'll do for status is I'll just print join point dot to string. Join point has a to string implementation that just prints out the method details. 
Now let's see what happens when I run this. So here you can see it's printed out the information about the join point as a string. So this is the two string implementation of the join point that's provided. So as you can see, you know that it's a join point that's executed on the execution of a method that takes that returns a string. The method is of the class circle. The method name is get name and it does not take any arguments. So this is a very handy thing. Uh, one really useful method of the join point is the to target. So I'll just quickly discuss that. There is a get target, sorry, a get target method is something that is very handy. So what this does is it gives us the object whose method was called and that method triggered this advice. So let's say I have a circle object and I call the method of the circle object and that triggers this advice. I can actually get a handle to that circle object itself. So I can uh, run methods on top of it. I can make changes. So I have control over that object itself. Now I can actually run this. It's going to just uh, give me a two string of that object. So here you can see it's a two string of the object. But the really powerful use of this is if you get hold of that object, say I call this circle equals and I'll cast this into a circle join point dot get target. Now I can actually use the circle. Of course, I'll have to import this. I can actually use this circle object inside my advice method. So this is, this is something that's really handy. So there are a few other uh, methods of the join point uh, that you can use. I'm not going to cover that, but you can always look that up. Uh, apart from this join point, there is one more uh, important use of uh, advice arguments, and that's something that we're going to look at next. Uh, let's say I have a point cut for all the methods that take in, let's say, a string as an argument. Now, the way I do that is by using the expression. I'll, I'll use an arg. So here, I'll say args, and uh, this has to be within quotes. So I'm looking at string arguments. So this point cut expression is going to apply the advice to all methods that take a single string argument. So I will write a small advice here, public void just some name to my advice. And uh, I'll just print out something here. I'll say a method that takes string arguments has been called. So just to make sure this works fine, what I'll do is I'll just call the setter on my uh, on my circle. So I'll just say shape service dot get get circle dot get name i'm sorry set name because we're trying to call the setter here so i'll say set name and i will pass a dummy name over here so Sorry for the typo here. Now let's see if this calls the advice over there. Well, yes, it does call the advice and then that advice runs. But now uh, what I want to do here is I actually want to know what is the argument that's passed. Now we know that it returns, it's passing a string as an argument. We know that this method runs only for methods that take in a string as an argument. Now what if I want to get the value of that string itself. So what I do is I define the name over here. So let's say I call this name. Now what I can actually do is I can use that name as the parameter over here. So we're doing two things here by specifying this. Not only are we telling Spring that we need the argument that's passed to the target method, the same argument needs to be passed to 
the advice. Not only are we telling Spring that, we are also telling Spring that this argument is of type string. So we're actually providing the same information that we provided earlier when we had a string over here, but what we are actually doing is we are also giving it a name and then we're using that name in our method advice so that Spring knows that that value needs to be passed. Now that we have this value over here, I can actually use that in my advice. Again, I'll just use it to print it out, but then this feature can be used in multiple ways in order to get a handle of the uh, argument itself. So say you want to run some pre-processing on your uh, method. So your method takes in a few parameters and you want to apply some advice that does some processing before your actual method runs. You can get a hold of those arguments and you can use that in your advice. And again, I'll just use this to print it over here. Now let's run, we should get whatever is being passed over here. We are getting the dummy name, which is passed over here. Now this advice has that dummy name value passed to the advice, and then I'm gonna print that out over here. Now let's run and see that in action. Well, there you can see the value that is passed that is accessible to the advice. So this is, these are some of the more common ways in which you would use arguments for your um, advice methods. So hope this was helpful.